We're live, we're live. What's up, everybody? This is Coach Stokes, Stokes South Fox Academy. You got to stay ready so you ain't worried about getting ready. But we definitely are staying ready by today's very special guest. This is very near and dear to my heart. I know I always say that, but I really mean this because me and his brother came up on the U.S. Uh, team, national teams together, nationals, international duels, you name it. So I'm not going to give it away, but I'm going to let you know who it is. He was an American boxer. Definitely is American trained out of Los Angeles, California. I mean, excuse me, out of Las Vegas, but by way of California. Um, he was the Junior Olympic <laughs> National Champion at 13 years old, Junior Olympic National Champion at 15 years old, Muhammad Ali gold medalist, an outstanding boxer of that tournament. I witnessed it myself because we was on the same team, um, aka the Muhammad Ali Cup at 17 years old, and boxer of the year in 1997 at 17 years old as well and representing the United States in the Pan American Games in 1999. My man, Jason Inglewalson. How you doing, baby? I'm doing real good, real good. Everything's going great. Man, Jay, can you let everybody know, um, how'd you partake in the boxing? How'd you get into boxing? Well, I started boxing, of course, when I was 10 years old. But I uh, started off at, in martial arts when I was five years old. And then um, from five, five to 10, I became a first-degree black belt. Then at 10 years old, um, my friend, I invited him to my karate dojo. He was a boxer. And that day we had sparring in the, in the karate dojo. And he beat everybody up in the whole gym. Everybody up. I'm like, what the heck? Even my sister took him, a big old grown man, kicked him in the stomach and to put him on the ground. So I was like, man, let me, let me, let me, let me hop in his game. So I went to Baldwin Park, California, where the first gym I started off at. And um, the first day in the gym, I'm there. My, my dad's bragging. My son, he's a national champ. Cry, blah, 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 blah. The guy looked at me and said, yeah, all right, whatever, grab a rope. And my dad kept on bragging. He said, you know what? Get in the ring. Put me in the ring. And um, I got another guy this time. This time I was like 60 pounds. The other guy was 55 pounds. Now, I did not know this. He just, the other kid had just come off winning the, the Silver Gloves National Championships. I didn't know this. So I'm, I'm in the ring. And in karate and martial arts, it's like the fighting. It's um, three points. Point, stop, point here. Stop, point here. Three points you win. In boxing, it's like nonstop. Yeah. So I get in there and I'm all squared up. And I'm, the, the bell rings. Well, before the bell rings, I asked the coach. I said, coach, 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 what do I do? What do I do? And you know what he told me? He goes, keep your hands up and you'll put off the canvas and you'll be okay. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. I was like, wow, my first advice. And right. I put off the canvas. And um, so I get in there and I'm like, I'm like okay, kid. Boom, one hard punch. He came back with 10 punches. Bip, 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 bip. So, whoa. And then again, boom, another 10 punches. Bip, bip, bip. He beat me up so bad for ring pulse to ring pulse. So bad. And I was like, everybody's like, oh, oh. And just, just destroyed me. But one thing that made me was I came back the next day and I stayed with it. Right, right. Jay. That was, that was my beginning. That was my beginning. Hey, you are one of the most technically sound fighters I've ever seen in my life, man. And and not only that though, but you are the slickest Caucasian person I've ever seen in boxing gloves. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you are the true meaning. I've seen people say, uh, you know, they use that term white chocolate. You really yeah. is just white chocolate, straight up, man. I mean, how did you get your style the way? How did you get your style the way that it was? Well, my coach Andy Pop Sanderson, legendary coach. Um, he, when I, was, when I was 14 years old, it was like, my boxing career is going great. Then I kind of hit a, hit a stagment. Uh -huh. It was like, I was going to make a lot of sacrifices, but he said, Jason, um, you're a white boy. You have no rhythm. So I'm putting you in a choir. I'm like, what? Okay, whatever. He took me to his church in uh, Pomona, California, New Gethsemane Church of God in Christ. I'm the only white boy in the church. He put me in the choir. I'm like, oh, I'm like, right, dead, right smack right in the center. Uh -huh. and, and um, it was like, I'm clapping my hands, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm getting my groove on, getting my Shabak on. I'm like, I'm like, oh man, it was, it was classic. And I tell you what, I got my rhythm. Next thing you know, I'm in the ring dancing, smooth, whoop, smooth, right. and, and just kick off from there and with this boxing um, instructions and with that soul. <laughs> it all right. came together perfectly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jason, how did, how was, how hard was it um, converting from being a fighter? to being a trainer because, you know, a lot of people think like, you know what, just because I box, I'm going to be a successful trainer, but it's totally two totally different animals. So can you, can you elaborate on that? How hard was it or, or, or how hard is it to convert? Yeah. 
Well, it, it, it is a big difference. And, and a lot of boxers, they're um, boxing the sport. We're all like, we know it. it's our, our way. We learn one way, boom, we got to, that's the way we go all the time. So it's kind of hard to step out of that zone to really teach and instruct and show different styles of boxing. Because the boxing is not just one style. You got this style, you got a counter punch, you got a boxer, you got a I mean, fighter, you got every style. You have to learn how to put them all together. And what I'm a, I'm a people person, I love helping people. So I'm like, okay, now that my boxing is over, I'm going to show them. This style. Well, first of all, my coach taught me how to box inside, how to box outside, how to fight inside, how to fight outside, how to box on the ropes, how to fight off the ropes. He showed me that whole entire ring, so he taught me all the different styles. So every match I went into, I had I had uh, whatever they came at me with, I had the re recipe for whatever they had. I had the recipe for to, to win, for victory. And so being a coach, I just, it's just showing people, instructing people, some people they like. Everybody is different. Everybody wants different things. Like not being people can be a like strict slick boxer. Mm -hmm. That's why you have fighters, you have different styles in boxing. And so I just love showing it. And, and for me, it became easy because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a people person, you know, like yes. yourself. We, yes. we love helping people. Yes. And it's like, I see some trainers that are out there that are just stuck in one way. It's like, like, come on, man, you got to step out of the box, you know? Yeah. 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 Take, take a view, have an open mind, smart mind at the same time. And, um, with that, it's like, I love it. I, I just love it. I mean, coaching and sharing my experience and knowledge with others. You, um, you, you, you've been very successful, brother, uh, in boxing and, you know, whether it's being a fighter and being a trainer. I want to ask you this. Who, who are some of the people that you've been privileged enough to, to train when it comes to whether it's amateur or professional? Well, start starting up. I mean, movie boxers, one, um, um, Ryan Garcia. Ryan who's, Garcia. Uh, yeah, Ron Garcia is one of them. Um, then you got, of course, you got Jesse Vargas. And uh, I worked with Keandre Gibson. I was helping him. And then also as well as uh, the Benavides brothers. Um, Jose Benavides Jr., who just boxed against Terrence Crawford, yeah. as well as David. And I was with David as fight. well. That was a tough yeah. fight, man. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, man, I was just kind of bummed because in training camp, because, of course, he has the bar in his leg. And he was shot two years ago in the leg, not never supposed to walk again. And, of course, not box. But then he came back, back from that. And actually won, won the title. And so in that fight, and well, basically in training camp, everything's going great in training camp. But when he's boxing, about the sixth, seventh round, eighth round, he starts spilling his legs, starts hurting real bad. It's hard for him to move too much. And, um, but he pushes through it. And then this, in the fight, in the second round, he started feeling I'm like, oh, man. So when he's like, put his hands down, do all this and that, I already knew his leg was not good. And then it's funny, after the fight was over um, in the dressing room, his leg was so bad it was like oh my goodness it was so big it was so swollen it was it was bad it was real real bad but he just and what i get nothing away from terrence terrence amazing boxer you know yeah. that boy's bad yeah and, and um first six rounds we're, we're we're giving him a go give him a run for his money first six rounds but uh after that it was like six round terrence Crawford changed up the game plan because we're able to pop up some jabs combinations mm -hmm. here and there and doing doing pretty good but then terrence changed up with not a lot of movement this and that Oh man, and I wasn't doing the speaking in the corner though, but uh, and and it was like he just basically it was hard for him to, to adapt to that. He couldn't change up his style. Terrence yeah. threw him off his game, and that that's what happened right there. That gotcha. was it. Bottom line, Terrence is a bad boy, and he changed yeah. his game plan, and that's what makes the champion. Definitely, definitely, both both guys are uh, are, are are great, and uh, I wish them both the best in in the future, especially when it comes to your fighter. You know, I mean, he he still can do some things. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, he just happened to fight, yeah, yeah. in yeah. my opinion, one of the best in the world. You know, Jason. Yeah, of course. Let me let me ask you this, brother. Mm -hmm. um, if you would like to speak about it, I know I know uh, people don't know your history, but you 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 had uh, you had some uh, you had a big scare at one point in time in your life, man, in which 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 helped you come to mm -hmm. the man that you are today. And you're a very spiritual person, man. You're very God. You know what I'm saying? You you're very into God. Um, mm -hmm. Would you mind talking about uh, uh, that experience that happened? That, that changed your life? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, when I was 17 years old, that's when I was boxing of the year, and my life was taken off. I'm traveling the world, representing nations around the world. Everything is going great. But um, right in 1999, um, right for the Olympics, the trials and all that, I started having headaches. And so the doctors had an MRI performed on my brain, and they found bruising all over my brain. And they're like, like whoa. So that was it. My career was automatically stopped. That was it right there. And um. It was a couple years went by, and I still did not. I still wanted a box, so I had a couple of MRIs, um, another MRI, and they gave me doctors gave me a pass. 
tests were a little shady, but they gave me a pass. I actually turned professional. And I went 3-0 as a professional. And um, in my fourth fight, um, things were getting ready to take off again for me. And uh, those heads, they came back again. The mm -hmm. headaches, and it was up. And um, I, w I went ahead and fought, and I just sent it to my coach. I went ahead and fought. It went one round. I had to walk away after one round. I had to mm -hmm. stop. And I was retested. They found so much bruising in my brain that said, Jason, if you ever get hit again, you'll die. Mm -hmm. And so I was then placed on medication, and I suffered through seizures for about 10 years. Wow. So, yeah. Was, yeah. Was, was, that a part, was that a point in your life, would you say that was one of the darkest points in your life where you really felt like, mm -hmm. you know what, you wanted to walk away from the sport, but you really couldn't? So you were, like, in turmoil? Was, was, was that a time? Yeah, it, 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 it was real hard because – I left home at a young age. Um, I left my mom, moved my coach. I left home at a young age when I was 14 to go after my dreams and goals. And it was like, I was right there at the very top. When they moved me to Vegas, and it was so funny. I looked back after and because uh, they had me almost at that setup. Had me set up with a bodyguard. <laughs> I had a bodyguard mm -hmm. with Jimmy Fox and the worst and possibly a manager and, and so much stuff off, off come my way. I was after a million dollar contract. I turned it down. because They're saying there's a possibility of a five million bonus contract. And right before that all happened, Boom! It was like they oh. told me I can't. I, I, not, it's all. It's over. It's done. It's done. I'm like, I'm. It was hard to understand. And my coach, who led me, is my spiritual father. He led me, and to uh, to look, God used him to lead me the way. And it was like he told me, Jason, you have to have patience. Patience, not one day, not two days, not ten days, not ten years, not a hundred years. Patience is forever. Have patience, and you'll receive an answer. It was like. So throughout those 10 years having seizures all the time, I kept my faith. I told everybody, one day I'll be better again. I'll have my life back again. One day what happens. Yes. And you and, are. Yeah, here I am. In the but, biggest uh, way. Yeah, in the biggest way. But it was funny because in 2010, I had an MRI point in my brain and I was on medication. They said, your brain is doing better. I took one of that medication. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, great. Amazing. Three months later, going back to boxing, you get a light workout in. And on my way to the gym, something happened. My dad asked me to get stamped to the store, and um, I went 9.30, July 3rd, 2010. Uh, a drunk driver went through a red light, 55 miles an hour, and I was in a head-on car collision. Oh, my God. Uh, and I was rushed to the emergency room. They thought my neck was broke, thought my back was broke. I was actually there for only um, three hours. They released me after three hours with a pain medication for my, for my chest and stitches on my shins because the brake pedals went through my shins mm. when the car smashed in. Mm. Miracle, I did it in my head, but um, I was in the hospital for three hours. They released me. The other guy had no insurance. So I sat home on my back for three months, most pain I've ever been in my life for three months. And it was, it, it was, it was hard. But then three months goes by, I'm back on my feet, happy go lucky. Fast forward two years, seizure free, everything's going great. My mom visiting town in my apartment, something happened. I, um, now, I was seizure free for two years. Something happened in my apartment. I had like eight seizures. My brain exploded on me. I had eight seizures and I went unconscious. Listen. So she picked me up, rushed me to the emergency room, and um, the doctors had to shock my body, which, in which I went into a coma. They said they'll go into a coma. He will wake up. 99.9% he will wake up, but we don't know all the possibilities. Brain dead, we don't know. So I woke up three days later and I was fine, but I, I couldn't talk or I couldn't walk. They had to right. teach me to walk, teach me to walk again, inch by inch. And, it, and it, was, it was really hard because I could see everybody staring at me. It was like, this ain't me. This is like, it hurt so hard in my heart because I'm like, I couldn't move. So I was sent home with crutches walker to my home. And three days later, I woke up. I received a miracle. My balance walked out. Everything came back to me again. And ever since that day, September 1st, 2012, my life has been getting better and better. I'm so blessed and thankful. Yes. Hey, brother, you know what? Uh, you, you know, this. There's, there's very few people that I keep in contact with. But when I kept in contact with you, I said, I'm coming to Vegas. And we linked up and we didn't link up like 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 I wanted to. But we did see each other. We spent a little time together. We, yeah. we caught a picture together. And uh, I just want to yeah, tell yeah. you, brother, man, uh, I appreciate you, man. And I love you, man, because you know what? You're still here and, you, and you're being some man. And you're doing things that 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 that, that you want to do. Um, and, and I tell people all the time. Being at that one percent, uh, being one of the greatest, is it's hard, man. Because you yourself use you on that road to to start them, and something is your health. Yes, just went out, yeah. you know. But yeah. but 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 by the grace of God, you're still mm -hmm. here. And I want to say, man, that a lot of kids, including myself, 
I'm a man now, but I was like, I want to be a world champion. <clears throat> Anything can happen anytime, kids. Listen to this. You talk to a man that's that's yeah. that's a teacher now, and he's telling you, you know, he was on he was on a roll. He went every he did everything. He won everything from junior Olympics on to nationals. He's about to be a part of the Olympic team, and then he just happened to go down because this is what happens. Don't let don't let your disgraces or 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 or, or those doors that close on you. I'm trying to tell you kids out there. To, to upset you where it's like, you know what, I, I'm going to give up. Because, no, one door that closes, there's another door that's even bigger that God is going to allow for you to 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 walk past. So, Jason, I just want to tell yeah, you, man, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate you, man. Um, when did you when did you really realize that, I guess my question to you, Jason, is what keeps you coming back to boxing, man? What, what, what sparks your interest? What keeps you wanting to come back and, and, and be a part of this game, man? Well, of course, um, I was given a chance. People came towards me, my coach. He helped me so much in my life. And people, when I was down, and it was funny because after my injury come, came, it was, um, it was very hard because it was like once at one time, one more, you have every all, Jason, you're the champ, we love you, this and that. And it was like, then when I'm no longer the champ, it's like, psh, everybody's gone. And I learned when you're on top, when you are, when you're on the bottom, you get to know your friends. It was very, very few. And it hurt, and I'm like, you know what? But those those that were there by me, my coach, he was there for me at all times. I had some some few, very few, there by me. He gave back to me, so I'm giving back to others. And so therefore, I'm gonna use my life, you know, use my testimony to help others. Tell them go after your dreams, I, whatever it is, go after it. I tell them go after it. And then some people even with words step out of your zone. No, I just say go after it. You know, and what if it doesn't work? No, go after it because you know if it doesn't work. You're not going forward. You're not going backwards. You're going forward. You're not going backwards. All you do, you're gonna go sideways, catch up, and go forward. So whatever you do, go after your dreams, go after your goals at all times, and never have regrets about it because you did not go after them. And so now, that's what I want to share. Now I'm in the middle of writing my book as well. Yeah. So I want to ask you about that. Yeah. Just to help out others. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing I'm writing is is my book. I've been writing that for many many years. And um, just uh, whether it becomes the number one seller or will it, whether it's sold at a pig's aid store, like he'll win live. Yes. So. Wait, well, you know what? You know what? When, as soon as that yeah. book drops, I believe in supporting people that support us. And I'm definitely going to support you, brother. You don't have to worry about that. So whenever it goes out, awesome. I definitely will. I definitely will get it. Awesome. Jason, hey, I want to ask you a question because I got, I got some fun questions that I like to ask everybody. And this is what I want to ask you. Who are your favorite boxers when it comes to three categories? When it comes to three categories, who are your favorite boxers when it comes to offense, defense, and ring IQ? Okay, well, IQ is like kind of hard. Uh, stuff he does is completely out of your mind. It's like you can't say it's like it's an IQ. You. Stuff that Roy Jones does, I've always watched him. I always loved Roy Jones, watching him. Stuff he did with so is, is, is it was just completely wicked, you know? And of course, someone I looked up to was Muhammad Ali. That was, that was I mean, I just loved everything he did, you know? Mm -hmm. Not just outside of the ring, but inside the ring, what he did. It was just, just, just amazing. And um, of course, Floyd Mayweather, I came up with Floyd Mayweather. When I moved here in 97, I was training with him because he turned professional in 97. I took, I took over his division in 97. Uh -huh. And you know, we're sparring, we're sparring together and everything, going at it in the gym. I loved it going at it with him. I loved it. So he even brought me to his training camp in Big Bear, California, when he won his first world title. And um, it was funny because he had his sparring partners there. He brought me along. He goes, Jay, I'm not bringing you on a sparring partner. I'm bringing you on to show you that this is your future. And, um, so at the training camp, he's beating up his sparring partners. He says, Jason, can you spar with me? So next you know, we start sparring each other. We started going at it too much. His dad had stopped from sparring. Said, "No, I can't ward for too many ward for advice. Can't ward." <laughs> <laughs> I loved it sparring with Floyd and his knowledge. He just, I mean, he owned it. You know. Yes. I know it was different, different, um, different time zone, different, different eras, as you would say. But his era, he took over. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. And he, he, it's all, it's, it's, I mean, it's all about smarts. You know. Is he, he? He took over. He did it. And so I really. Let, let me ask you this: that. You spar with him on numerous occasions. How difficult mm -hmm. is he inside of the the ring? How smart is he? How calculated is he? Um, um, 
Well, me, it wasn't, it wasn't that difficult. I mean, with him, I loved it. Just, just uh, when I was, at the time I was on my game, I loved it. I mean, able to, to get him at different, different times. And he's so quick, so fast, and his reflexes. And it, I, I just, I just, boom, I was like, I loved it because I was right there hanging with him. I'm like right there with him and go with him. And it just was great. But uh, his, his knowledge is, is, boom, he's on another level. He really is. He's on another level. And so with his knowledge that, with everything he does, you know, his defense, his offense, his footwork, you know, he put it all together. So, and now he's pound pound one of the best. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I, I, That's right. That's right. Hey Jay, hey, I'm. Uh, I have a. I have a new thing that I'm doing. It's called. It's called Coach Stokes Twelve Rounds. And what I do is I ask you twelve questions as we go into twelve rounds of a championship <laughs> fights, and you gotta give me. You gotta give me oh, answer man. within two to three seconds. Whatever comes off the top of your head, okay? <clears throat> let me. Let me. Let me talk to me. All right, you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Shoot All right. Me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> round, round one, ding, ding, you're on a mountain in Alaska on a bus going 100 miles per hour. Where are you sitting on the bus? Front. You, you said the front? I want to see what's happening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, the front. Okay, okay. All right. All right. I'll make sure I'm, I'm not I'm not praying in the back. I'm in the front. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. All right. Which boxer do you pick in Fight Night Round Five, the new boxing video game? Which which fighter do you use? Do you pick? Well, what, what, what are the choices? Any, any and everybody. Any and everybody. They got everybody on. Oh, Cheers, Robert Spence, everybody from past to present. Who you pick? Oh, give me, give me, give me, give me Roy. Roy Jones. Roy Jones okay. Jr. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Which animal? Which animal would you describe yourself as? Tiger. Okay. All right. Pearl Jam or Aerosmith? Aerosmith. Your favorite favorite actor? Denzel Washington. Okay. Cleto Reyes or Grant? Grant. No, Nike. no, Cleto Reyes. Cleto Reyes. Okay. Nike or Adidas? Um, Adidas. Roberto, um, excuse me, Robert Garcia or Virgil Hunter? Virgil Hunter. Pedicure or arch your eyebrows? <laughs> oh, pedicure. Uh, <laughs> hey, all right. Mex uh, uh, Mex Mexican food. I, I, I'm not good at eyebrows. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just want to say, yeah, hey, I'm gonna get some. I'm not some eyebrows. Yeah, that, some that, was, that was that was that was the grand grand and that grand was grand, not grand. <laughs> hey, Mexican food or Italian food? Mexican food. Android or iPhone? What round are we on? Huh? iPhone. iPhone. Used to be I, I Android now, my iPhone. Okay. But what round are we on? Okay, the last. What round are we on now? We on the we on our last round, the twelfth round, and I got a four. This is a four part question, so you got four choices: okay. Golden Boy, Ooh, man. Top Rank, PBC, or the Zone. Now, now, are you asking who's the worst? <laughs> 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 I have to say they're all having I mean, I mean, okay. I mean, I mean okay. Zone, that that the zone that's a new one, so I, so I hope the hope they could take out to be better than the others, you know. Right, right. So, so what would you rank uh, them in order? Then I'm gonna ask you that. Oh, okay. So you, I mean, top rank Golden Boy, PBC Zone, what was the other? and in PBC, P PBC, PBC, yeah. my, like PBC, okay, PBC. I go. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna go with PPC right now. Uh -huh. I know. Train people from Golden Boy and Top Rank, of course. Top Rank, Golden okay. Boy, and the zones up in the area. That's a new one. Right. Okay. 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 Well, hey, brother. Hey, if, I, I, if, 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 if Oscar's watching this, I say Del, Golden Boy. If you watch. Okay. <laughs> but Golden Boy, if Oscar's hey. watching it. Hey, <laughs> and, and if Al was, no. if Al no, was but watching, they're all, they're all, they're all, they're all like, they're all equal. Yeah. Hey, I mean, I mean, I just seen him. I shook his hand. Uh, Who was that? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. 
No, no, I because I'm Bob Bob Aaron right there. I remember when I moved here in 1997, Richard Still, he uh I was living with Richard Still at the time and he had me uh to meet Bob Aaron, I'm shaking his hand and uh Bob Aaron wanted to sign me right there, shook his hand and everything like that. And um, as an amateur, he wanted to sign me and I uh, just we said, Yeah, 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 but then we walked out and we said, No, nah, not going with him. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you shaking felt... Bob Aram's hand. Yeah. Uh, possibility, possibility right there. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, okay. Hey, Jason, what, what is Thanks, you... man. This is an awesome show. Stokes, Stokes, Stokes House, Stokes no, House. <laughs> no problem, man. No problem. Hey, uh, do you have anything planned for the future? Anything before we conclude? Um, well, well, right now I'm, I'm working on my book right now and working on motivation speaking as well Good. to share my life with others, you know, and um, about living your life, going after your dreams. And keeping your faith, never losing faith, and never giving up. Those two things, you know, faith is a substance of things hoped for, yes. and the evidence of things that are not seen. So you got to have faith. Keep that faith. Now I've been given the name The Faith Fighter, and that's my logo I'm coming out called The Faith Fighter. Yes. And um, boom, I got the stamp on now. Boom, shirt's coming out. And um, just we're all faith fighters, you know? So yes. that's what okay. I do. So I, got, I got a shirt for you, and for sure. Not a problem. Not a problem. Hey, what 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 are your social media handles so people can get in contact with you, bro? Um, I I have a I have Instagram under Jason E. Walson, um, and as well as Jason Walson slash the faith the faith fighter. So you can look me up, find me on both, both ways. And, uh, I'm also on Facebook, mm -hmm. Jason E. Walson, of course, and um. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. I haven't gotten to Twitter. I'm kind of like still not, not, I haven't caught up with that game yet. But, uh, yeah. but Instagram, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm on Instagram though for sure. Okay. And soon I'll be on others. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Jason. Everybody, thank you for tuning in today. Stokes House Boxing Academy. You got to stay ready so you worry about getting ready. And this concludes our interview with my man, Jason Inglewasser. This is Coach Stokes and we out.